In this video, we're going to look at conditional probability and consider the probability of an event happening given another has already occurred. We can use the formula the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. Let's look at this in context. I'm going to take a six-sided fair dice. So six-sided fair dice. We know the outcomes are equally likely, and listing the outcomes, we can have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. We see this time and time again. I'm going to define event A to be rolling a square number. So rolling a square number. Event B will be rolling an even number. So let's go ahead and fill out the Venn diagram. We have A and we have B. So if I put the numbers in, we have 1. 1 is a square number, but it's not even, so it'll go in A and A only. 2 is even, but it's not square, so it'll go in B. 3 is neither even, nor is it square, it will go on the outside. 4 is both, it's square and it's even. 5 is neither, that will go on the outside. And 6 is going to be an even number, but it's not square. So if we now assign probabilities, we can see that A only is going to be 1 out of 6. The intersection will be 1 out of 6. As an unsimplified fraction, 2 out of 6 and 2 out of 6. So let's see what this means. The probability of A given B. So given that this is an even number, what is the probability that it's a square number? So given, so relative to this particular formula, given it's now even, so given it's B, given it's even, what is the probability? So we're looking at what, and just jotting this down, what is the probability of it being A? So the probability of A given B. Well, let's look at this without using a formula. We can see now the probability of it being B. We've got 3 out of a 6. So if it's even, what is the probability now that it's going to be square? Well, there's only one square number out of a total of 3. So we could write that this is going to be 1 out of 3. Alternatively, you could look at the probabilities and say 1 plus 2 is 3, so it's going to be 1 out of a 3. Let's now look at this actually using the particular formula. So we could say that this is the probability of A intersection B. Just for future reference, the probability of B intersection A is exactly the same. So we've got 1 out of 6 divided by the probability of B, which is going to be 3 out of 6. So we can see from this now the 6s are going to cancel, and we can say that it's going to be 1 out of 3. So the probability of A given B is the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. We can, of course, write that the other way around. The probability, and I'll write it here, I'll just jot it down, the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B intersection A divided by the probability of A. In general, the probability of A given B is not equal to the probability of B given A. If we just quickly have a look, we can look at the multiplication law from here. So using this one right here, we can say the probability of B multiplied by the probability of A given B will be equal to the probability of A intersection B. So we can use this problem now, or this particular format, to solve a range of problems. We can also look at independent events, and we will come on to independent events later. The probability of A given B will be equal to the probability of A if these are independent. Uh, that's something that we will focus on in a future video. So let's look at answering some questions using this particular formula. So the first one, a card is drawn at random from a pack of 52 playing cards. Given the card is a diamond, find the probability that the card is an ace. Now let's just think about this logically. We don't even need to really work this out. It is a diamond. We now need to find the probability that it is an ace. Well, there's only one ace out of a possible 13. So we could say that this is going to be 1 out of 13. Let's now look at using the formula to show that that's correct. 
So what we'll do is say that event A is now drawing a diamond. So event A is drawing a diamond. Event B is drawing an ace. So what we're looking at is finding the probability that the card is an ace given that it's a diamond. So the probability that it's B given A. Well, this is going to be the probability now of B and A divided by the probability of A. So it's probability of B and A divided by the probability of A. So if we look at this, the probability of A from here is going to give us now, we've got a total of 52 cards. There are 13 diamonds, 13 out of 52. Or we could simply say one quarter as they are just one quarter of a pack. We've got diamonds, we've got spades, we've got hearts and clubs. If we look at this now, the probability, and I write it just here, the probability of it being now the ace of diamonds, so just writing this here, so it's both now, and I can write this either way around, it doesn't matter, this is going to give me one out of 52. We know there's only one ace of diamonds, we know there are 13 diamonds, so I can simply write this now as the probability now of B into section A, which is one over 52, over now 13, over 52. Hence why I wrote it like that rather than simplifying it. At this stage we can cancel the 52s to get 1 over 13. We could have done that problem with a Venn diagram also. Entirely up to you if you wanted to use a Venn diagram. Okay let's move on and look at another question. A and B are two events such as the probability of A is 0 0.6 probability of B is 0 0.5 and the probability of A into section B is 0 0.4. We're asked to find the following probabilities. Remember this is A and B. If we have the union it's A and or B. What I'm going to do here is use a combination of my formulae and the Venn diagram. I know that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A into section B. We've seen that in previous videos. I could use this to find the probability of A into section B or I could simply use a Venn diagram. So if I put event A and event B here and put S, the intersection is 0 0.4. I know that the probability of A is 0 0.6 so this must be 0 0.2. The probability of B is 0 0.5, already got 0 0.4 here, so that's 0 0.1. And that gives me all of B. We know that all probabilities sum to give 1. I've got 0 0.7 in total, so this must be 0 0.3. I could, of course, simply use the formulae, and I could have said now the probability of A is 0 0.6, plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A into section B. We can see from here 1.1 which is going to give us 1.1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.7. And that will give us the value here. OK, let's look at the next one. The probability that it's B given that it's A. So we can write this as the probability of B into section A divided by the probability of A. We already have the probability of B into section A. It's exactly the same as this one right here. So we can say that's going to be 0 0.4 over now 0 0.6. Alternatively, you could have just looked at this particular ellipse. The probability of it being both is 0 0.4. The probability of it being A is 0 0.6. We add these together, which is going to give us now 2 thirds if we wanted to write that as a fraction, or 0 0.6 recurring. OK, so that one's done. Now the probability, so we're looking now at the probability on the next one, of A given B. So the probability of A given B is the probability of A into section B divided by the probability of B. So we know the intersection is for 0 0.4 and we've got now the probability of B is 0 0.5. So that's going to give us 4 fifths or we could say that that's 0 0.8. Again, the Venn diagram would allow us to do that. So the probability now that it's A, which is this part, given that it's in B. So the probability of A and B is 0 0.4. The probability now of B is 0 0.5. If we look now at the probability, the next one, the probability of A given it's not B. So we can say now that this is a probability 
of A and not B, so A and not B, divided by the probability that it's not B. A few different approaches with this one. The probability of it being not A, uh, sorry, A and not B is this part just here. It's just this 0 0.2. So that's going to give us 0 0.2 divided by the probability that it's not B. We can see that from there, or we can see it from here. That's going to be 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 and that will break down to give two-fifths, or 0 0.4. So all I've done is used a combination of the laws and the Venn diagram. It's perfectly fine to work between the two. I certainly like to work between the two and kind of combine them if I'm ever struggling to find a probability. Okay, let's look at another one. Let A and B be events such as the probability of A is one quarter, the probability of B is one half, and the probability of A union B is three fifths. We need to find the probability of A given B, the probability of not A and B, the probability of not A and not B. So what I need for this one is the probability of A intersection B. I can find that now by using these three pieces of information. So the probability of A intersection B is going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A union B. So going ahead, we can do that. We're going to have one quarter plus one half minus three fifths. So what does that give me? Three quarters. So three quarters minus three fifths. And that's going to give me 15 minus 12 over 20. So that's going to give me 3 over 20. That is the intersection. So here is A, here is B, here is my sample space. So I've gone ahead and just used the formula, or the formula that I saw or you saw in the last video. So 15 minus 12 over 20 is going to give me 3 twentieths. I'm now going to fill it out from here. If we think about this reasonably, we've got now the probability of A union B is 3 fifths. I could put that on the outside now. All I'm going to do is write these now as 20 -ths. Do we need to do that? It's entirely up to you. I'm going to write now the probability of A is 5 20 -ths. So this is going to give me 2 20 -ths. So all of this is 5 20 -ths or 1 quarter. The reason I'm doing this is if I do any calculations, it'll make them slightly easier. And I can also see that this is going to sum to 1. If we look at this, probability of B is a half, which is 10 twentieths. So that has got to be 7 twentieths. If we look, that's going to give me a total on here now of 12 twentieths. So this is going to be 8 over 20. If we simplify this, this is going to give 2 fifths, which we expected as we know that the union is 3 fifths. I'm going to leave it like this and then we will go ahead and do some calculations. So the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A uh, intersection B, A and B divided by the probability of B. So we can see that that's going to be the 3 twentieths, which we calculated, divided now by the probability of B, which gives me 10 twentieths. So that's going to give me 3 over 10 or 0 0.3 and that's why I'm leaving them now in uh, as equivalent fractions. Okay let's do now the probability that it's not A but it's B. So if we look at this right here it's not A and it's in B well that's going to be that one just there it's simply the 7 twentieths and my Venn diagram helps me out nicely with that one. If we look at the probability now the probability that it's not A and it's not B well, that's going to be on the outside. We can say that that's going to be 8 twentieths, or we can say that that is going to be now 2 fifths. Either way around, 2 fifths, 0 0.4, entirely up to on how you want to simplify it. So there we go. We've looked at using a couple of the different laws and also some Venn diagrams. If we just do a quick basic recap, we can say that the probability of A given B is the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. We can do it a whole different ways. Uh, for independent events, the probability of A given B is simply the probability of A. We can say the probability of B multiplied by the probability of A given B is the probability of A intersection B if we wished, or again, we can use Venn diagrams. I personally 
don't often use this, but would use it if pushed. I think using the Venn diagrams and the standard formulae is fairly logical on most questions.